Hello, John Britt here. Today I'm going to show you how to do a progression blend in uh, glazes. And what we're doing is we're going to make up a base and then we're going to add incrementally add iron uh, in 1% increments. So 1% dip a tile, 2%, 3%. So we're going to see what iron looks like uh, in a progression of increasing uh, strength. Okay, so first thing we do is we're going to get a recipe. In this case, uh, I, I have it printed out from a computer. Now, it's um, 20 times 5 is the recipe. Hansen's 25 5. And so what I want to do is multiply that by 3 because I want 300 grams total. So each of my ingredients will be 60. So I'm going to weigh that out. And I'm going to put it in a cup like this. I usually mark it. And then I um, get the thickness right. I don't want it too thin. Uh, because I want to get a good coat, but if it's too thick, remember I'm adding. I'm going to be adding 45 grams of dry material in the end, so it should be slightly uh, thinner than normal. Okay, so here's the sheet that I sent you, and it tells you how to do it. So we're going to make up 300 grams. We did that. Add water, and we blend with this hand blender uh, to mix it up real good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get our tiles lined up. So here I've laid out my 10 tiles. Now the next thing I want to do is mark on them. First of all, these all have a mark on the top, like a number, 222, so I would record all these numbers. Now on the bottom, I also want to write stuff. Here I've written number one, our first tile from the sheet, oxidation, and my initials. So on the second one, I come in with this is iron oxide and water. So I would do JB2 and oxidation. If you were doing uh, reduction one, you would write reduction also. The reason we want your initials on the bottom and a, a number on the bottom is sometimes a glaze will run and obliterate the top or vice versa. So that's why we like to have it on both places. And uh, we're, we're going to have a lot of tiles. So say we have 600 tiles, you have to find yours. So it's very difficult unless you have an initials on there or some symbol like a asterisk or a smiley face or a triangle or something. Okay? So once we get all those marked out, and we're going to record all that, now we're ready to do our 1%. Now 1% uh, of 300 is 3 grams. So I'm going to weigh out 3 grams on this scale. I'll set this on 3 and put, put uh, the material in there. It doesn't have to be perfectly precise because uh, we're just trying to get an idea of how uh, the incrementally adding it looks and then later we can go back and be very precise okay so first thing we'll do is um, we're going to dip our base tile but the next thing we'd be, do would be put in our three grams take our hand blender just like this sometimes I'll hold this over here you want to mix it pretty good longer than that because uh, if you don't it will make spots of unmixed iron. It'll look really good but you won't be able to reproduce it. So we're going to dip our tile like this. So kind of just put it in there pretty quick and then I wait for that to get tacky so it's not wet but it's not completely bone dry. And then I'll put it down to the line 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. So you can see that it's just below the line. Uh, that'll give us a good second coat. And then on a third coat, what I'd want to do is hold it on an angle like this. So you can see that I got an angle so that if this runs too much, I'll always be able to see this side of, of a single coat. Okay? So now I would do my next three grams, stir, dip the tiles. Next three grams, stir, dip the tiles. Okay? So that's what you do, and I usually work right on this board so I don't have to stack everything up again. I just work on there and then take it to where it's supposed to be. So some will go in electric, some might go in reduction. Now another way to do it is to do this cut method. Uh, this would be used if you had a scale that really didn't measure very small amounts. So say I wanted to measure out a quarter of a gram, but I... My scale only measured to one gram. Well, then you put a gram down like this. Now you just eyeball it, cut it in half. Okay, so that's half a gram. Now we'll cut that in half. That's a quarter gram. There's an eighth of a gram. Sixteen, thirty second, sixty fourth, one twenty fifth. So see how you can real quickly 
get small amounts that are not perfectly accurate but close enough. Okay, so the other thing you can do is with the method or the uh, sheet we're doing, you needed to measure 45 grams, which is 15% of 300. So I've weighed out 45 grams, and now what I'm going to do is cut it into thirds. So each stack will be 15 grams. Now, if I cut each one of those, one, two, three, four. So each stack here is three grams. So then I can just add that, stir, dip, add that, the next one, stir, dip. Okay? It's kind of a, just a quicker way. It doesn't have to be completely precise, but it'll get you your progression. And also on these progressions, this is one of the most commonly used tests in ceramic, uh, ceramic glazing. You could do it with silica. You could add 1%. So you want to stop crazy, you'd add 1% silica, 2%, 3%, like that. Or 2%, 4%, 6%, 8% of, say, kaolin if you wanted it not to run as bad. So you would run the, this type of test uh, either with colorants or materials. All right, do your assignment, and we'll see you in the morning.